So we're, we're back to, to some of the food supply issues. Um, first, I just want to thank um, our team, project team across New York University, University of Florida and Arizona State um, and National Science Foundation for this work. So we were a team of you know, geographers, cultural anthropologists and um, supply chain experts. So of course, we're, we've all seen the news when the pandemic hit, there was news reports of you know, discarded products. And part of this um, really highlighted a couple of things about our food supply chain. One, this is a picture of tomatoes and um, tomatoes in the US basically are for the, the restaurant supply networks. Uh, uh, tomatoes for supermarkets essentially come from uh, Mexico. And this is according to my colleague who works with uh, tomato farmers down in Florida. And so you know, the, the, our supply chain was really designed for efficiency in the restaurant and supermarket network. And what we're seeing um, as all the restaurants are closing uh, that uh, the system is collapsing in many ways. So, you know, restaurants now, of course, don't have as many customers, but they're still struggling to get products at the same quality and price. And they've also had to adjust their business models as we know for social distancing, et cetera. So this work is really looking at the pivotal role that um, supply network, restaurant supply networks really play in the food system. We're focusing on independent restaurants. Uh, they're really important in our economy. Uh, you know, small businesses, there are 500,000 small businesses that are small restaurants. 11 million people are directly employed and 5 million people in the supply chain. And a lot of small scale um, farms are also supplying these restaurants. Um, these restaurants. And they're facing different sets of operational challenges than larger um, franchises and larger businesses. So this is why we focused on them. So our focus is really to understand the vulnerabilities in the supply chain, um, as well as in restaurants and how they are adapting and responding. So a couple of questions we're, we're addressing is, what are the strategies that restaurants are using to adapt? And does their relationship with not only their suppliers, but other restaurants help them? Because there, there is very much a restaurant community. And finally, how has um, the supply chain shifted? So we're, we're working across our three sites. Um, one is in New York and Queens and in, uh, in Manhattan. We're also focused on Maricopa County um, and Gainesville, Florida. So as the pandemic has unfolded, of course, COVID, which was once a hotspot in New York is now a hotspot in some of the other places. Uh, so it really works for a rich um, research. Some of our methodological advances in supply chain research is one, um, it's really, there's, there's not a lot of focus on spatial analysis, we're comp comp adding that component, um, where we've designed our, our research uh, that's Zoom friendly, but based on ethnogra ethnographies, and finally social networks, even though supply chains are networks, there's, there's a paucity of um, information on supply networks. And so but specifically, the the vertical networks, the supply chain, as well as the horizontal networks, um, the restaurants. So um, this is, you know, one of our contributions. I'm just going to show uh, from some of our semi-structured interviews with the restaurant owners um, at the beginning, we've coded for these interviews and basically I'm going to show you a visualization of the, the themes. And so what you're looking at here, um, don't be afraid by this, this pretty figure here, um, are all of the words that, were, that, that, that restaurant owners were talking about. And we see two really big divisions. On the right-hand side, um, there's really focused on supply chain issues, distribution, relationships with suppliers, um, alcohol sales, um, drivers taking other routes, um, competition with other chains. And then on the left-hand side, these are really operational issues. So it's how is the restaurant pivoting? How are they finding, um, you know, keeping their staff safe uh, with mask wearing? How are they, you know, a lot of their employees have left. So how are they, how are they handling this? And finally, just on the bottom, you could see a lot of this pivoting, pivoting to takeout, 
French fries don't travel well, as we all know. So there's a lot of food that have been designed for restaurants in one way that now that they've had to pivot, you know, has an effect on everything else. If we just focus on the main themes in all of these, it really boils down to a couple of topics in our, our interviews we're uh, conducting now are focusing on this. Again, this is like zooming into the most prominent themes on the right hand side. It's really about distribu distribution and planning and the supply chains. Uh, supplies are not um, uh, pro providing the products at the same intervals as they were in the past, even if they are available. Um, and then really on the left hand side, the COVID risk to staff is a, a big issue for the restaurant owners, um, getting their clients to wear masks when they're not eating. And then we see this sort of intermediary in terms of pivoting their business model and pivoting to takeout. So just in conclusion, you know, there's a lot of uh, factors that are contributing to uh, restaurant outcomes. And we hope that this research will inform not only information on strengthening um, some of our components of the supply chain, but also um, develop resilience to the, to the future. And finally, if you want to reach out to us, either me or any of our team members, um, feel free to do so. And to learn more, you can uh, see our website. Thanks so much.